Happy Pride, everybody. I'm Jason Lyric, and I want to welcome you to End the Life, the LGBTQ plus Pride celebration. This is in conjunction with Prince George's County Parks and Recreation, and we're going to have a great time today. We're going to have a conversation about a whole lot of different subjects, and we hope that you get something from it, that you are inspired by it, and that you are also empowered by it. And we're going to get started. Good morning. I am Dr. Kedrick Peters. I have the pleasure of working at Bowie State University, um, serving as the director of the LGBTQIA Resource Center, as well as the university coordinator for the Office of Multicultural Programs and Services. Um, I am a proud product of Prince George's County Public Schools and of the area, and I've been doing this work in diversity for almost a decade, and so I'm excited to be here to help us become a more just and equitable society. I am Liberty Deffenbaugh. I'm a graduate student at Bowie State University. I also serve as the vice president of the Graduate Student Association. I've been in every rainbow club I could ever get a hold of uh, and happily have been going to Pride for two decades now. So wow. that is. Mm. <laughs> so you started as a baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And like I said, um, I'm Jason Lyric, and I'm actually an independent artist, as well as I'm an education assistant principal. Um, but more than that, um, I'm a single dad, and I've been part of the D.C. Black Pride celebration for, I think, eight years. I've been a volunteer there, which um, has really opened me up to a lot of um, different diverse aspects of the community. Um, and so today I do want to talk about some different topics and get you guys opinion on them. The first one I want to talk about is something that I think um, we've seen a progression of, and that is the um, importance of visibility, especially in mainstream. As we know, a lot of uh, the public's opinion about different things, race, gender, uh, and an array of things, really um, starts to form through the media. That may be a good thing or a bad thing, you know. But right now we see like with, with uh, television shows like Pose, mm -hmm. um, a lot of visibility has been pushed out there. That for a lot of us, that's great. And we've been waiting for this for a long time. But there's also been a backlash. So what do you guys think about that? That it's kind of almost like this dual thing happening where it's being pushed out there, but then there's a lot of pushback, especially with the last administration we had, you know, that Who? really fueled oh, exactly, <laughs> Sorry. exactly. It fueled a lot of mm. lot of people to kind of, yeah. in a sense, come out sure. with mm. their hate. So, what do you guys think about that? I think there's definitely a pendulum effect in that, um, mm. where you can only be pushed down so far before you start to be tired of it and stand up and stand against it. And just like you said, with Pose, uh, the movie Disclosure that came out. Mm. Uh, this, this big push in the media to not only have the representation, but acknowledge the representation. Uh, the amount of people that are trans that were not necessarily out as trans and have felt more comfortable being honest about themselves and their experience. Um, but there, I think there will always be that, that pushback and that swing back in society, whether it's just or not. Um, it's frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> it's frustrating for sure. Um, what do you think, Doc? So yeah, over the past decade, um, I agree that there has been an increase in terms of um, acceptance in terms of the LGBT community. So for example, like on platforms like I think HBO mm -hmm. and um, Netflix, they've like you know have like a series during mm -hmm. Pride Month yeah. um, in June, and then October is LGBT History Month. Mm -hmm. So they're they're good. So it's good to see yourself in society, to see your lived experience, um, but. I would say about the backlash is that it, it's, it's a good thing. I think it's a first step toward us acknowledging mm. um, that we're going against the status quo. So okay. what we're seeing is people are resisting what they've been socialized to believe. So it, it makes sense that people are pushing back. Um, for example, um, Unique Jones, she is a 2000 and something grad from Largo Senior High School. And she started, she started the Because of Them We Can um, initiative. And I think that talks about black people, and what we've done in the past and how we can see ourselves in the future. So I think this new initiative for LGBT community is important, but it's only symbolic. It's not, it's, it's not structural. They're not going to see huge changes. So it's on, the, it's on the right path, but there's more to be done. So companies need to like, do more pledges, like mm -hmm. real commitments to do the work. So it's, it's all symbolic, but it's, it's, it's not enough. So yeah. let me ask you this, sure. um, and, and this is how, what I feel about Well, let me say this before I ask you a question. When I think about visibility, one of the frustrating things that I, <clears throat> excuse me, I found is um, I was later in life 
coming into my sexuality or acknowledging my sexuality sure. was always there. Um, and I remember as a young black male, if it wasn't for Noah's Ark, mm -hmm. I would not have seen anybody that, that even remotely gave me a resemblance of what I was going through. One of the, and I'll say this, I think visibility is so important, but it has to be authentic. Absolutely. Right? Because for so long, I battled with my sexuality because in my mind, gay meant you wanted to be a girl. And so mm -hmm. I was like, well, yeah. I don't want to be a girl. Now, I knew I had attractions for men, so I was like, well, maybe that's something else because mm. I don't, what I see is you know, a whole lot of this, which I, I love that, but that was the, all I saw. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, then I must not be gay. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and then it wasn't until I started to dig a little deeper that I realized that there was a diversity with even within the community. So mm -hmm. when I'm look, what's frustrating to me is that as a black male, it's hard to find mm -hmm. the representation for me. So even though there is this great visibility, it, it's kind of hard to see just regular love stories. And so right. I tend to then. Uh, forced to go to YouTube and watch a lot of these web series right. mm. that a lot of people talk down on but like there was one called uh, Love at First Night mm. beautifully done um, the Noah's Ark series and, and other ones on the web series that I, I think are really good but we need more of that so how do we there's so many um, how do I want to say there's so many parts of us absolutely mm -hmm. You know, I call, and I don't mean this offensively, but I call us the alphabet people because, yeah. you know, it's, you alphabet know, it's mafia. Of, yeah, so I say, <laughs> I'm, I'm part of the alphabet people, but there's yeah. so many of us. Right. Mm -hmm. How do we adequately get representation? Because there's so many parts of us. Yeah. We're not just one thing either. So Absolutely. how do we do that? I think it needs to start with having more than just white males being represented. Okay. Mm. Uh, I think that's been a pervasive problem throughout society as a whole, mm. where you kind of inch in with who's acceptable, right? And mm. it starts with gay white men, and it's nothing against them or anything like that, right, but right. It, it needs to be more. Mm -hmm. um, you have movies like But I'm a Cheerleader that had a tremendous yeah. amount mm -hmm. of diversity within within that movie and, and it was really before its time as a whole and I'm very thankful that I saw it when I was young but it's the access to things like that that's right. really going to make a difference okay. for people so that you know they don't have the same experience that you did where you didn't see yourself um, and then you just confuse you right like, exactly where, where do I fit where in, do in I this fit in? right and, and like you said with all the alphabet like I didn't know the term for how I identify until I was 25. Wow. I knew when I was 12 that I was not straight, yeah. you know, and, and that battle within yourself to have it for 13 years, like that's, that's difficult. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you went through the same thing. Yeah. And it's so, so important to be able to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I would echo it. I, just, I was just writing down notes. I was like, yeah, good <laughs> point. Like on Netflix, all these shows, there's like, mm -hmm. There's extremes, just like kind of like you know when we think about politics, like mm -hmm. there's extremists and then there's like you know neutral people. But I think in the LGBT LGBT community, plus community, make sure you use the plus. That's all right. the LGBT acronyms. cuties. And you covered. And I'm covered. <laughs> um, there are there's extremes that you don't really see, like just an average. And, and I hate to use that word because they're all socially constructed. But there's extremes, like we see Pose, and then we see Will and Grace. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a happy medium it's just I think we're still discovering ourselves mm -hmm. and I think since society is still pushing back mm -hmm. um, it, it's a lot more work for us to be done so we have to start challenging these creators and a lot of them are white men yeah, yeah. Um, a book called white fragility talks about who's in, in charge of media and government it's white men and so mm -hmm. we got to start challenging the status quo more so when you talk about that what comes to my mind is little Nas X you know, he, I love him so much. Yes. I will protect him till the day I die. <laughs> yes. But he, I think oh, we need baby. we need more little Nas X's. Absolutely. And because what mm -hmm. he has said, I feel like all, all he needed was the, he gave himself permission to be mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. And once he did that, that was the self acceptance. And once he did mm -hmm. that, then he, he's out there, you know, and mm -hmm. he is pushing the status quo and mm -hmm. he's pushing mm -hmm. boundaries. And I think, He's a creator Absolutely. that is going to actually open doors mm -hmm. for the young ones behind him to say, oh, I can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that, um, I, like I said, I'm an uh, independent artist, and I, mm -hmm. for the most part, I was doing uh, Christ-centered music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And then all of a sudden, as I became more comfortable with mm -hmm. myself and wanted to tell more of my story, mm -hmm. I have a project coming out soon that is talking all about my journey mm -hmm. as a gay black male That's from wonderful. the time I was a kid to mm -hmm. now. People like Little Nas X kind of gave me that um, permission that I felt like I could do this yeah. in regardless of the backlash. Mm -hmm. So I think we need more creators like that. We need more people behind the scenes. And we also need to understand that just because we're seeing more of it, mm -hmm. if it's not correct or authentic, you know, mm -hmm. we can see a lot of black people on TV, but if it's all about them being slaves, uh -huh. drug dealers, and maids, mm -hmm. right. then just just stop. Right. You know, let, right. Let's, right. Let, let's start over. Right. Right. So, you know, um, so that leads me into um, when you talk about that, we, we look at um, when you don't see yourselves or, or when you have that battle, it's a lot of mental health issues that come Absolutely. with that. Um, and I would definitely say that even during this pandemic, mm -hmm. um, a lot of the LGBTQ plus um, community members dealt a lot with that because now you're at, can you imagine being a kid who's dealing with your sexuality and you are forced to be at home 24 seven mm -hmm. with a parent or family members who really don't support you or someone right. who's trans. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what, talk to me guys about the mental health and what you all have, your feelings about it and anything that you know about help that's out there. Yeah, this is your field. So real quick before we get into that, I do want yeah. to make a comment about Lil Nas X. Okay. Um, mm. And part of why he is so important, he was outed. Right. He, it was not necessarily his choice okay. to be out, but mm -hmm. there was groups that outed him, and so he went, you know what? Fine. And that's what is so important about him is mm. that mm. he was forced to be that. in the spotlight in that man. scene, but then he embraced it and how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. And it is horrible that he was outed like that. Yeah. That is the most traumatic I thing. Can't you, stuff like, like that. Everyone deserves to be in charge of their own narrative. Right. It's and supposed their to own, be. And right. what year is this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Right. Mm. You know, and I was called racial slurs on the bus when I was 12, when mm. I was trying to figure things out. Yeah. And that is, that's horrific for mm -hmm. a child. And uh, one of his videos where it's his prom and he goes back and talks to his mm -hmm. baby self. And I mm. promise I will protect that sweet boy until the day I die. Mm. Love him so much. But that's a very important part of who he is and that the amount that he really kind of stepped up and embraced himself and allowed other people to do the same. Mm -hmm. um, and, and bringing in the mental health aspect, I do not, I do not envy um, how much of a painful transition that must have been to be in a public space like that, mm. to be consistently told that you're terrible, that you're going to go to hell, that you know, all of mm -hmm. these things. And while he has absolutely embraced that and, and let other people do that as well, it's still traumatic. Yeah. Um, We're human. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, and in the counseling psychology field that, that I'm in, uh, LGBTQ plus people are more prone to have substance abuse disorders. Mm -hmm. They are more prone to have depression, anxiety. They are less likely to have health care. Uh, proper health care and housing, access to a lot of things that most people may take for granted or not understand how important it is to have a therapist who accepts you for who you are, not just like, you know, is okay with you being gay, but really understands mm -hmm. the additional struggles that are put into that. Um, there's organizations and, and policies like uh, WPATH for transgender people that mm -hmm. it almost seems like they have to defend their gender identity and saying that they're not just cross-dressers. Right. Systematic change, wow. while some does exist, mm -hmm. is not necessarily what needs to be in place. Mm -hmm. I, c I can't imagine having to defend my gender identity to just somebody who has to be the one in charge of signing a letter saying that I can get gender-affirming uh, mm -hmm. surgery. And it's, mm -hmm. it's part of why I'm going into the field that I'm going into, and I'm so passionate about it. Like, baby, give me all your letters. I promise I will sign them. Um, yeah. But for for people who are not necessarily educated in it or don't have that mutual empathy there's not a lot of understanding of the particular struggles that go into that mm -hmm. and i know that we've all experienced various like overt aggressions constant microaggressions and yeah. aren't they constant 
<laughs> they were exhausting. <laughs> and just how, just how tiring it is to be told that you're wrong, you're bad, you can't possibly be this, or you're you know, something else completely. And whether it's understanding, or whether it's a lack of representation, or whatever it is, it's heavy. Yeah. Because it's still, we're, like I said, we're still human. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, even, I felt like even for me, there was, you know, when I kind of was self-affirming, sure. um, I felt like I still had, that's what my project is about, um, reconciling the little boy in me that never was affirmed, that mm -hmm. was never um, accepted. And you really do go through feeling like something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Right. And that is horrible to go through mm -hmm. life feeling like something's wrong with you. Thank God I had, and I had to say this because my mama watched this and, and then she'll get sad. <laughs> Mom, I'm fine. And <laughs> you did a great job. Aww. So it wasn't, you know, I had, I knew I had the support of my mom right. and my siblings, but it still is in the back of your mind. Mm -hmm. So um, what do you think? Um, what was that, what's that journey so, like? So think? thinking about the question about mental health. So yeah. without a question, you hinted to the depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. suicidal ideation, especially oh, for, you know, 21 and younger. They go through it a lot. I'm used to working in high schools. You probably, yeah. you know, see it and they, yeah. probably, can't, oh, they yeah. probably can't express it. So they might be acting out. So yeah. um, self-evaluation is so important. I saw something on Instagram the other day and it said um, self-reflection self mm -hmm. um, is so critical. If you don't do it, you won't grow. And yeah. so you kind of have to find it's, it's difficult it can be, especially for people in high school. I couldn't imagine dealing with in high school or in college. All those hormones. Um, yeah. it, it's <laughs> all those, yeah, hormones. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough being a teenager. <laughs> and so you have to find your network and you define your self care and making yeah. sure that you know that I'm here. I'm here for a purpose mm -hmm. and regardless of what's out there, like, I forgot, what's the song, Beyonce? Like, your haters are gonna be in there. Mm. Like, they, some people need that. They're, they're, they're like, I, I, I listen to James Baldwin a lot, and okay. he says something, and I'm like, I, I get it. He's like, why do we feel the need to feel better than somebody else? And, and why do we yeah. feel the need to tear other people down? Right. If we can create a real society and people didn't need that, mm -hmm. we'll be very differently. And so you have to compound that with race. Because, you know, sometimes you really can't dive into sexuality, because we got to be black men first so, right. and black yeah. women and, and women get that because yeah. you you know minimize that part of you right now to get we to this fight this, we right. Fight yeah. this right now yeah. Yeah. and so it, it, it's layered but you got to engage in self-care see a therapist mm -hmm. if you have access to it or find resources there's free resources in different communities mm -hmm. and so i hope youth really um go out of their way to find that network and know they didn't matter like yeah. and not like not all lives matter they matter mm -hmm. for themselves first so you to, your self-care really starts at home so i think the pandemic was challenging for most of us mm -hmm. but i think i have become i've blossomed like i really liked i'm only child so i leaned into like going to the gym journaling mm -hmm. like being okay to be alone because I, I mean i came in the world alone mm -hmm. it's technically you know parents are, are in the room but <laughs> some people were there yeah some people were there but we're gonna go out alone so if you can't be comfortable with yourself alone right. You need to work on that. Yeah. And I love who I am. I, I, I mean, I'm not in my 30s, but I didn't feel that way in my 20s. So right. I had to grow into that. And if kids can learn that early, look, like you said, little Nas mm -hmm. X, getting it, that's, in, that's, in, that's, that's tough. But he had to like yeah. re reaffirm himself immediately. Absolutely. Thankfully, as, as the generations have gone by and the years have gone by, you know, the struggles that were you know, from our elders in the 60s at Stonewall mm. versus now, that the progression has been incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm very thankful that as I see you know, these babies coming up mm -hmm. and the automatic assumption of like not putting someone in a box of what their gender, their gender, you know, their, their sexuality is mm -hmm. like, I promise you, I will cry every time about it because it just fills my heart so much. And I really, I just hold out that hope that you know, a couple more generations from now, it is, not pervasive it mm. is accepted like not only it's accepted it's standard that oh. they people get to be who they are they can breathe we are so dynamic as people why why try to stifle someone yeah and i think just you know a lot of, i'm listening to you guys um a lot of it that i'm hearing is um access yes mm. um i know for me um whitman walker right mm -hmm. out here the the medical facility um, mm -hmm. in DC they were life-changing for me mm -hmm. um, just and f no you know I didn't necessarily have any kind of issues medically that I was dealing with but just to uh, have a place 
where you see the rainbow flags or you see there are doctors and workers that um, identify with you or if, if they don't identify with you, they at least um, are, are affirming mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so important. And you don't find it. You know, I know for me, when, when, I, when I, like I said, was self-affirming and, and, and was bringing people in to, to, who I, to who my authentic self is, mm -hmm. I was searching for other mm -hmm. um, LGBTQ plus people. Yeah. And so having doctors, you know, just for, because I got a cold or whatever it is, but yeah. having doctors that I could go to that um, I felt affirm me mm -hmm. really made me feel um, so much better even about myself right so we need to get out to the babies and not just the babies some of our some of our mm -hmm. elders, <laughs> um, where these places are yeah I, I think that the DMV you all do a great job out here with that yeah. but other places there it's 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 very hard it's very hard so I can't even imagine um, somebody who is dealing with, let's say, um, wanting to transition, mm -hmm. and they're in mm -hmm. some of these smaller places, mm -hmm. and they don't have that support, or, or the mental health piece of it. Yeah. I know um, there are some places that I've been, that I've lived, where it's very conservative, mm -hmm. and so a lot of mm -hmm. the um, mental health workers have that conservative mindset. Mm -hmm. So imagine going to them and talking to them about, hey, I think I may be having some same gender, you know, loving issues or whatnot. Mm -hmm. issues, and that's but, you dangerous. Know, it's, it could be very dangerous, especially yeah. in the small communities. Absolutely. So we've got to get the we've got to get the places out there. So those who uh -huh. are th these health professionals, these mental health professionals, um, we need to get the information. We need to put that out there. The same way we have commercials about. Um, uh, like a prep mm -hmm. and, and, and things like mm. that. Yes. Um, we need to have those same type of commercials and, and publicity and campaigns right. about mental health mm -hmm. places that are available for um, the LGBTQ plus community because well it is so important. Um, I wanted to ask you all also, what do you think about, you, you hit on it a little bit when you, I think you were kind of getting to the point of like, <laughs> where we normalize, where we're not necessarily saying, oh, it's a boy, it's a girl. Right. You know? Oh, I so, hate those. So what do you think about um, <laughs> oh, gender those. reveal parties? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious. So the woman that created those, her child is non-binary. Really? So if that's not karma, I don't know what is. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Um, I love that you have all these little <laughs> yeah. of information. We're not trying to do that, yeah. Uh, once, you, once you get past this ideal of like so binary and so binary. I love my therapist. It is so fantastic to have somebody that I don't have to explain my life to, right? Mm. I don't have to justify my existence to. Uh, and one of the first things I noticed about my intake form was how long the list of sexual identities was, how long the list of gender identities was wow. and the ability to choose more than one. Mm. Something like that is transformative for a person who has consistently oh, yeah. experienced the opposite. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's such a simple thing, right? So not, simple. It's not preferred pronouns. These are my pronouns. And, and those small adjustments oh. make such a huge difference okay. for people. Talk to me about that. Sure. Because mm. we, 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 it's, we've kind of been yeah. trained to say preferred pronouns. Right. So tell me, is that not... Um, acceptable anymore? So it may have worked in the beginning, mm -hmm. um, but now it's not, you know, what do you prefer? Like, no, this is who I am, oh, mm -hmm. you know, and okay. it's, it's more gender affirming and more just, you know, who you are. And I had a conversation with a friend of mine about this a couple weekends ago and there was a presentation and they were talking about preferred pronouns and the majority of the trans people that were in that space were very upset. Mm. And I absolutely understand why. You know, it's, it's just another one of those microaggressions, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's, okay, well, what do you prefer? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I might do it, I might not. You know, I, I ran a gay bar in Baltimore and half of my staff was trans. And I will tell you that I was so quick to correct somebody if they misgendered any one of my staff. Mm -hmm. And having an allyship like that is incredibly important. Um, so the flip side of that though, mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. this. Because here I am, I'm part of the alphabet sure. community, but um, I did not know that. So, like, <laughs> um, like for me, um, at my my uh, job, what we've been encouraged to do is in our emails mm -hmm. under our names, we put 
our pronouns, right? I do, nice. I do that so, too. Yeah, and, and, nice. and they felt like that, that would be, again, affirming to mm -hmm. our students so that they yes. would know there's an ally. Absolutely. Right. However, so let's flip it though. Sure. If I'm a cisgender, sure. um, I feel like Charlemagne the God when he says, I, I want to make sure I'm saying all the terms correct, <laughs> you know, because um, I'm learning them still. Sure. But that's care. Yeah, yeah. That's growth and that's care. Correct. And that's so important. So, mm -hmm. how do we support our allies or mm -hmm. would be allies? Um, because if they do misgenderize mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. or if they do say preferred pronouns mm -hmm. just out of ignorance or sure. because of what they've been trained, how do we how do mm -hmm. we support them so that we're, we're not like, um, you're right. going to hell because right. you misgendered, you know, like we're flipping it now <laughs> right. so that we don't banish them because yeah. of their ignorance. How, what, how do we do so, that? I would say it's intent versus, mm -hmm. you know, your intent versus impact. So your intention was good, mm -hmm. but you still have a you have a negative impact I on like my lived experience. So oh, I, like I work that. in diversity, equity, inclusion at BSU, and we talk about pronouns are mm -hmm. important. Um, like you know, you do you do the twenty twenty census. You can mm -hmm. self identify. So you said the key word earlier, transformative. If people can be able to self identify and say my pronouns today are he him, tomorrow it could mm -hmm. be she hers. Mm -hmm. You you have no authority over my life, should not be. That's interesting. Tell me more. You look like a man. You have a bun up. But, you know, people need to respect our agency in our lives. Mm -hmm. I call it colonizing my existence because mm -hmm. it all comes down to colonization and how people need to feel to have authority over other people right. because we're all a part of the 99%. We should be clear about who's running the world, but <laughs> right. we're, not, we're not looking at the, the economic piece of how important these divisions right. are in our society. They're so important. But back to pronouns, um, they're, I think they were really important. You should never ask someone what are their preferred pronouns. Like mm -hmm. you said, they're firm pronouns. And you sharing as an ally saying, hey, good afternoon, I'm Dr. Ketcher Peters, my pronouns are he, him. That might alert somebody in the mm -hmm. community, okay, this person might be woke-ish, not sure if they're woke-woke. <laughs> Um, and then equally important, you go into one training or you are watching this video, you think you're the know-all after one training. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing. You have to be a yeah. lifelong, we're all educators, Absolutely. lifelong learner in this community. Yep. It's a lot of work and you have to really dig deeper and yep. not just be a, a, a flag wearer, right. I mean a flag person during <laughs> Pride Month. I right. love you guys. Okay, so what about the other 12 right. months, of, I mean 11 months of the year? Right. You matter this month. Just this, just this <laughs> month. So, so, so a little pushback. So then sure. do we, how do, how is it okay to say to someone, since you, since you can't say, or it's not necessarily um, appropriate to say, what are your, what are your preferred pronouns? Mm -hmm. Would you say, what are your pronouns? Can you ask I that? Don't. So I really loved the example that you gave when you introduce yourself, say what your pronouns are, because that invites the other person to choose whether they want to or not. Mm -hmm. And it's that opportunity to self-disclose. Exactly. And if you're an ally or if you're in the community and you hear somebody saying like, you know, if, if somebody says preferred pronouns, be like, hey, you know, I really appreciate that you're trying, mm -hmm. you know, we've progressed a little further and it's not, you know, a preferred identity. It is their identity. And mm -hmm. just simple little things like that, it, you know, it simple. doesn't have to be combative, right. you know, and it's very important to not continually put the burden of education on the people that are being marginalized. I need to step on that. I'm going to step some water on that. Say that yeah. again. Right. <laughs> the, the camera. Look into the camera when you say that one. It is very important mm -hmm. to do the work and put in the time and the energy and not put the burden of education on the person that is being marginalized. So where, so where, um, <laughs> Set I'm going to sip my water right now. <laughs> and I like that. <laughs> BSU. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a BSU thing. <laughs> but my question, my question then would be this. Then, wh like, where does, where is this pool of information? Because mm -hmm. um, in June, we may, and I, I'm using, let's not use June because that's a problem. <laughs> let's, just, let's say in September. In September. Sure. September, <laughs> we're being, we're, we're giving this push from, from this marginalized community uh -huh. to say, mm -hmm. hey, my preferred pronouns are, or this is this is the appropriate way to address these areas. Mm -hmm. So then, um, the rest of the community says, "Okay, I got it now." Right. And so then in December they're like, "Oh no 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 no! You can't ask me my preferred pronouns." As a matter of fact, you can't even say the word "preferred." Right. So then they're like, "Well, wait a minute! I, you you guys just told me." And so like, where? where is this like a universal um, concept, or is it? I'll let you is, it yes. is it based on locality? Like, where does right. where's the pool of the information coming from? So, part of what makes being in the Alphabet Mafia so hard <laughs> is that it is not universal. Right. 
and things progress and things progress at different levels. Mm -hmm. You know, the the scene in DC is going to be potentially more progressive than people in. I don't want to say a state that's going to make that state look bad. Right, so, I know. I like that. I like right. that. Yeah. I was like, I was going to give you one percent. Right. I was going to give you right. one too. Right. So <laughs> it's it's very important to to be patient and kind, and it's hard to be patient and kind when you feel like you've had to do it for so long, mm -hmm. and you feel like you're bashing your head against the wall. Like, why don't they get it? But they might not have been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. Whether they understand that they know a person or mm -hmm. not, you know. And we're still, they all do. We're still <laughs> doing, you know, it took us. I think it, it took us time. One of the things that um, yeah, it took me years mm -hmm. to kind of be okay with me and Absolutely. understand me. And so I had to give the same liberty to those who I invited in. Absolutely, to mm. give them that same opportunity. So what I but what I heard you just say, which I think is, it, it's <laughs> um, regardless of what one locality thinks is appropriate mm -hmm. or not. If you lead with love, if you lead with kindness, mm -hmm. if you lead with that. Then that makes a difference because yeah. then I won't be offended because right. I, because you're leading with love mm -hmm. and I don't feel the burden to educate you as right. much. But mm -hmm. what I do feel is that now we can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that and that makes sense. So maybe that's the message mm -hmm. that we get out is that how about you engage in conversation mm -hmm. right. and you'll learn because yeah. and and you may and then also we're not <laughs> monolithic. So right. Like, we're not. No, yeah, so, monolithic at all. So you <laughs> may you mm -hmm. may prefer one thing, or that I right. may meet somebody else who may yeah. identify the same way you do, and they mm -hmm. may prefer something different. Absolutely. And so then, when I'm with you, mm -hmm. I'm gonna rock the way you rock. <laughs> and when I'm with this person, I'm gonna rock the way that they rock. Right. And that's love. Absolutely. And that's care. And then that and brings respect. Us to the, and that's mm -hmm. respect. Respect. Because everybody wants, as a black person, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we are just just because. You identify the mm -hmm. same way as racially, and I'm not assuming that you do, but let's mm -hmm. say that you do. Sure. Um, we don't have the same path, and there may be things that are acceptable for you that's not for me, and mm -hmm. vice versa. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you, you know, I may, I may be okay <laughs> with the N-word. Mm -hmm. You may not. So, <laughs> you may come up to me and say, hey, what's up right. about N-word? Yeah. You better not come up to him and say it, because he may not be, you know. And, but if, yeah. if you get to learn and know mm -hmm. us, then you know... It's not just about, oh, I, I just want to learn about gay people. I just mm -hmm. want to learn about, mm -hmm. you know, lesbians or transgender people. Right. But it's actually, let's just learn about uh, liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Just to learn about lyric. Let's yeah. learn about the right. doctor. Absolutely. So, anyway, uh, can I say one, one yeah, thing I'm gonna oh, say is absolutely. just know that you're not beyond reproach. Yeah. Right. That you need to lean into that person. And yes. again, like you just said, we're not monolithic. And so mm -hmm. be mindful of that. So essentially, you have to put on different hats at different settings. So mm -hmm. if I'm coming to the DMV, you shouldn't generalize people, but I'm a sociologist. So sometimes when I do generalize, I think we are more progressive. Mm -hmm. um, but when you go to some other places, you might have to your your word choice might have to shift a little bit because people are a little bit lagging in terms of information. You know, yeah. we're pretty educated in yeah. this area in terms of higher education, but that doesn't mean anything. Oh, absolutely. But it means that people need to be mindful of your your, your location at yeah. all times. Or even in the trans community, because um, mm -hmm. I have family members that are, are, are huge in the trans community. And they look at um, the, it's just like anybody really, it doesn't have to deal with sexuality. Um, they look at this new generation and they're mm -hmm. like, I would never. I would never say that. I would never dress mm -hmm. like that. I would never accept that. And it, so some of it is right. generational. But mm -hmm. it's not about them. Right. It's about it's the person. It's not about them. <laughs> and, and, and that's my point. So, so then when we look at it, mm -hmm. then if we look at it, yeah. it's not about those of us who are in the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. Um, it's not about those of us who are African American mm -hmm. or, or those of us who are Irish or whatever. Sure. It's just about us being human. Mm -hmm. And then just just learning that person because mm -hmm. it's yeah. it's the same. It's you know, like there are generations of of black men who would never have two earrings in the ear. Yeah. Never. Oh, yeah. And it's not even a, a gay straight thing. Yeah. It's just that that is not what was acceptable with right. them. Mm -hmm. So they would never do it. Right. There's some who would wear just one. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Which but year? we do too. Which right. Year? The left. I was, uh, I, was, I was like, right. I grew, right. Up, I grew up in New York. So in New York, it was the uh, left. Was, so I had yeah. my left pierced. And yeah. then it wasn't until I was in my 20s mm -hmm. I got the other one pierced. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's how it was in my high school. The <laughs> left yeah. one, like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So we just, I think, so that brings us to allies. Right. Because um, when we're talking about allies, first of all, we have a lot of us, um, and, and like I said, I had a, a very supportive family and, and mm -hmm. friend base. 
um, but some who do not. Like, yeah. they don't have the support of their family members, their yeah. parents. Um, I think I was watching Pose last night, the first episode. So um, I just love that show. So I do. Have you and seen the, Legendary? Yeah, I've seen, yes. Oh, oh, some of my people. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> some of my people. Netflix? We were talking about that last night. Uh, HBO, HBO Max. HBO, HBO, HBO Max. Max. It's okay. very good. All these and platforms. And you probably see people you may recognize. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there's, yeah. yeah um, we were talking. Some of the Garcon people. We were talking last mm-hmm. night. We were at the pool party, but um, <laughs> just <a> little plot. <laughs> DC Black Friday. Um, so, but I was watching the scene where the young man was um, thrown out of the house. Yeah. Mm. Because his father. Because first of all, his father found out that he was still in dance class. Mm-hmm. And that, but this was in the eighties. Right. Mm. Was, and he, yeah. And he and then he found he had a, a porn magazine, and then he literally took his child. Mm-hmm. And threw him out the house like he was a scene. piece of trash yeah. on the ground and said, "You're dead to me." Yeah. Then the mom came out, slapped him, yeah. and said, Slaps. "Why would you, why, why would, would you, you do, do this? this? Mm. Why would you do this to us? Why would you do this to us? You need to repent mm. to God, yeah. and then you can come back." And yeah. he was like, "Later." Yep. So, mm. and then of course he wanted to be on the piers, all that kind of stuff. So, first question. Sure. Um, what do we say to, the, to, to people who don't have that support? Where do they go? What do they do? How do they get the support? Thankfully, there are a number of resources for housing, mm-hmm. for um, education. There's specific scholarships and things like that that are available. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have your phone out, so I'm sure you can pull up uh, yeah, specific like ones. Mm-hmm. But it's very important to have spaces where they can go for housing so they don't have to go back to that abusive and toxic environment Mm -hmm. where they may be subjected to conversion therapy which quite unfortunately still happens Mm. and I have feels about it Um, you know when when you bring this ideal of God's gonna send you to hell if you're gay Mm. mentality into it Mm. I don't think that people who say these things understand how detrimental it is to the mental health of people that, you know, if, if I had a parent say that to me, and this is my parent that's supposed to love and support me. Hmm. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. I can't even imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So thankfully there are interfaith churches. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different spaces where you still can have that relationship with your, your whatever spirituality you want to engage mm-hmm. in. Um, and it's becoming a lot more prevalent as, you know, as the years go by and there are more resu- resources available. And thankfully with the new administration, some of those are reinstated. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a long way to go for the protections that are needed, but at least there's something, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, there's always more work to do and there's always more things that, that we can do to support these babies who just have to experience these horrible things. And I will say this, it's not just the babies because I I was way out of being a baby (laughs) Mm -hmm. when I I, um, was Mm self-affirmed. And that was, I mean, and once I self-affirmed for myself, I Mm -hmm. still had a whole period where I was like, I don't want to like, no. Right. I'm, mm. you know, yeah. I'm ducking and job, you know, I'm it's scary. coming to DC all the time and nobody knows why, you know. Right. Um, and, and so, yeah, we, they, even some of the not babies need the support, but what, yeah. what would you Yeah, say? I was listening, looking at my notes. Um, <laughs> this is the note taken. So yes. I, 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 can, I can second a lot of your, your comments here about, you know, the support they need, mm-hmm. um, but they need to assess in their, do they have this support from other family members or relatives, yeah. okay. and if that's not available, like you said, the local, mm-hmm. the local, state, and there's some federal programs. Mm-hmm. There are resources for 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 adults mm-hmm. and for young adults and for children, um, because again, the mental health piece is super critical. Um, and then I think what's more important is that um, they shouldn't wait for somebody to affirm them, kind of like um, yeah. Little Nas X. Mm-hmm. Um, but just long, as long as they like are okay with themselves mm-hmm. and seek therapy, you know, there's a stigma. Um, in some communities about seeking therapy makes you weak and, you know, just go to Jesus for everything. No, that's, you can do that layered with also seeing a therapist and, and having uh, someone that's culturally competent. Uh-huh. I think she, that's what you were hitting at earlier. If they're yes. not culturally competent, so let's say you go in and you're not sure why they're treating you differently. It could be your sexuality. It can be your race. It could be your, your class. That's just too much. You don't want to... Mm-hmm. 
you're going there for help and you don't have the time to teach this person about disrespecting you or their aggressions in that setting. Mm -hmm. So find somebody, you know, that is a good resource, family or friend, and then seek therapy from somebody who's known in the field Mm -hmm. and who has a great reviews, great reviews, excuse me. And that goes back to that. We have to be, we have to be visible. Those Mm. places have to be visible. I know, um, uh, us helping us in Mm -hmm. in DC. I remember when I learned of that, I just, I Good was one. a sponge, like I really love, this is mm-hmm. why I love DC um, and the DMV is because mm-hmm. that's where I found my tribe. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this organization, like I was mm-hmm. just finding out about so much, mm-hmm. yeah. but it's here and it's not everywhere. Yes. And so then it's going to take, well, I'll put it this way. Um, one of the reasons why I changed um, the concept of my music mm-hmm. was when I saw a lot of, um, the, our babies mm-hmm. were mm-hmm. killing themselves because yeah. of bullying and their sexuality and things like that. And I was like, I need to speak to that. And so then that helped had mm-hmm. me delve back into my childhood. So yeah. some of the songs are speaking from the perspective of me as a kid. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and that was important for me to do because that's kind of me being an ally um, within my own community. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think that we need more people doing stuff like what we're doing today. Mm-hmm. We need the, um, I think that's why pride is so important. It's not just about pride. the parties mm-hmm. and the parade. I mean, the parties are good though. The parties <laughs> are <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Let's just, uh, um, but like DC, and I, I talk about DC Black Pride a lot because mm-hmm. they really nurtured me. Mm-hmm. Um, we've become such a, a great family, but they really mm-hmm. took me under their wing and kind of helped me. And I used to go to the elders. Mm-hmm. So that mm-hmm. I would say that's another thing going to the elders and Absolutely. I just used to just kind of sit at their feet just and just listen. talk and mm. listen. Um, listen. So that's important. Um, and then some of our health officials um, who are part of the community or allies of the community, mm-hmm. we need them to kind of step up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Outside of Pride Month. Yeah, outside right. of Pride Month. Right. Because in all mm-hmm. over, like it's got to, it's a real thing. Yeah. We've got, like, it's, it's, it needs to be an agenda for this administration. It, mm-hmm. um, we need the representation, but then once you're in, yeah. then do something. You know, like, right. I love that, you know, the, this administration has so many, you know, of these flags represented. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but now what are you going to do? Right. To, because you know the real deal. You know right. the real story. Well, Some of our there. cisgender what are people we doing don't now? know. <laughs> what right. are we doing now? Right. Yeah, like my favorite artist in the world said, what have you done for me? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I just had to put that plug in there for my girl, Janet. <laughs> but, um, so I want to talk about the fact, too, um, that we are not just, you know, when we when we look at these flags, sure. um, we may have one or more of these flags that we mm-hmm. identify with. Um, where We may be um, not just gay, but we may be black, we may be male, mm-hmm. we may be female, we may be transgender. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's so, so much. So let's talk about that, the, you know, the intersection of all mm-hmm. of that mm-hmm. and how do we move in this world when we are multi-layered. What, yeah. what have you guys experienced with that? So, yeah, I think this is so important. Um, I love intersectionality. Um, Kimberly Crenshaw kind of started this work in the late 80s, early 90s. And so it talks about... Um, how we we occupy different spaces of privilege and oppression. And so I'm a male, um, a black male, but still a male, and I know I've occupied certain spaces. So you should be able to, in certain settings, based on your privilege you might have in that setting, speak up for the woman if you are a male, mm-hmm. regardless of your race. Um, if you are not a part of the LGBT community, um, plus community, and you want to, if we're not at a table, right. bring it up. So beyond Pride Month. So mm-hmm. let's say in September, for example, September 15th through October 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month. Mm-hmm. Why not have intersections about being Latino mm-hmm. while, while being a person in the LGBT community yeah. plus class? I think mm-hmm. you gotta, yeah. we got to stop separating these struggles. Andre Lord, that's my favorite quote from her. She says, there is, no, there is no thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live in single issue lives. Wow. And so we have to intersect all these things and yeah. understand the roots of how important these divisions are in our in politics, in our mm-hmm. economy. It's, it's, it's been one of the, the best propagandas since the beginning of this, the founding of this nation. We love to keep ourselves separated. If right. we were to come together with a coalition, 
how powerful we would be collectively. Unstoppable. And I think the next generation might get it more because I, I think, I, think so. I have all so. my fingers and toes so. crossed for that. I'm, I'm praying for them, and we're yeah. here to give you advice about overturning this transformative system because yeah. we that's what we need a, tran- a new transformative system. Yeah. But we need to have to start putting these things together. We're not separated, and we shouldn't be about oppression Olympics. We love to yes. say, no, 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 black lives matter, so let's not talk about the gay stuff till later. Or, right. you know, sexism is an issue. Equal pay is an issue for yeah. our women. Why is that right. not on the forefront for all of us? So right. As if these are like, hurdles that you have to do one at a time. So no, we can right. do them it's all at the same time. Exactly. We're, we're multifaceted. Right. We can multitask. Right. We got cell phones. We can do uh-huh. a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. What do you think, Libby? I think it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. It is. It's a lot. And like I said earlier, we are dynamic beings mm-hmm. and to not honor that is is very unfortunate and having policies in place that stifle certain aspects of of your personhood, you know, mm-hmm. gay marriage not being legal till 2015 and I don't even need to get into the press administration, yeah. Right. <laughs> and yeah, let's just act like <laughs> Right. So, so you have persons that in their lifetime, they were not able to marry the person that they wanted to be with, mm-hmm. even based on race. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. people forget how recent that, that was. That was not that mm-hmm. long ago. It was not. There were people alive that experienced that. Mm-hmm. And you have elders that were not able to be legally recognized mm-hmm. And how impactful that is to have your entire life be told like, oh, well, your relationship doesn't matter because we don't recognize it. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. And you bring in the intersectionality of that. Imagine having your relationship not recognized, your personhood not recognized, mm-hmm. your race not recognized, and how absolutely, I mean, we keep Enraged saying the word. you should be, but. Right. <laughs> so we say the word heavy a lot. Yeah. That is crushing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To, to not be recognized and supported at all through any of your identities. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. Uh, 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 no, go ahead. No, no, it's, it's, it's terrible. It's not, it's that terrible. Mean, it's that, not much more to say about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that it's important that, I, like I said, conversations like yes. this mm-hmm. um, are so important because it, it helps, helps people to think. When you had said um, a couple of seconds ago about um, women's rights, right? Mm-hmm. So we fight for women's rights. But it, within that fight, mm-hmm. you have black women, mm-hmm. and with, you know, other women of color. You have transgender women. Mm-hmm. You have uh, lesbian women. You have non-binary. Mm-hmm. You know, you have all of that. Mm-hmm. You have to address within that one issue. So really, you really, you really can never separate it no. because it's not separated for us. Correct. We don't fit into individual little boxes. Right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, these boxes. Right. So what? What do we do? How do? How do we? How do we move the needle further so that um, the the generation behind us yeah. won't have to necessarily have to deal with it? Because we we're not dealing with some things because of the generations before us. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what what do what more do we need to do? What do you guys think? I think we need to keep that conversation going. Conversation and, and pushing our elected officials. You know, they they run on these agendas and mm-hmm. then they get in the office and like, oh, we'll get back to you in two more years. No, do it now. So. Dr. Jones at University of uh, Texas, she has a video about allies and talks about never tell a marginalized group to be patient. Mm. You say that because you're privileged and you can right. say that, but right, we need these issues resolved now. Why do we need to wait another four years or two years right. to be patient? Why do we need to continue to die why does in George, the meantime? Why does George Floyd's death that means there need to be now, now police reform, or why do there need to be these policies and these new initiatives supported? Right. Like companies and start stepping up until something tragic, tragic was yeah. caught on yeah. camera. Trans people are being killed left and right, but yeah. it's really not really just talked about for decades. For decades, but it's just now becoming more. Now it's becoming more prevalent, and but people aren't. I'm so sure that it has happened for centuries. Right, and we just right. oh. and, and not even getting into the erasure of anyone other Agreed. than heteronormative relationships, Correct. right? Correct. So just pushing the needle. We've got to keep pushing our elected officials and the conversations piece. And then yeah. ongoing awareness. Mm-hmm. We can't talk about it if we're not really diving in. I think the other piece that we have to do is we've got to um, rally mm-hmm. each other. Because yeah. when, when, when you mentioned George Floyd mm-hmm. 
and as tragic as that was, mm -hmm. it wasn't that long after Trayvon Martin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it was like, so why did the Trayvon Martin thing not spark the way George Floyd did? Right. You know, so what what was it or or, or either even Breonna Taylor, you know, mm. it's, it still wasn't like George Floyd. Right. And even when I talked to some of um, my white brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. Um, they focus on George Floyd, and rightfully so, but I'm mm -hmm. just like... Tamir Rice. Where right. were you? Freddie Gray, we burned down Baltimore. Freddie Gray. It's yeah. So, like, so many names. We're missing where, so many names. Like, where right. were you? But how upsetting is it that before? there's that many names? So and, many names. And it's so frustrating to sit there and be like, why hasn't this changed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Sorry, I shouldn't have... No, I, no, <laughs> no. It's, it's all things of conversation, yes. Yeah. Like, when I do my Zooms now, yeah. I found a background that has all of the names. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And so it's, it's How just, small is the print? Right. I was like, how, you how know big what? is but this what it did was It, it, it <laughs> caused right. people to ask, what was that yeah. behind you? And then I could, I could yeah. talk more about it. But I just wonder, um, like, where were all of you allies mm -hmm. who are here now for yep. George Floyd and you really want to make this change? And, right. and I get it and it's lovely. Mm -hmm. But like, where? Where are you? It's tiring. And right. so where are they now when we are dealing with the stuff that we're dealing with? Because right. we still have a lot more issues within our right. um, alphabet community, within our racial community, and, yeah. and any other mm -hmm. type of communities that we belong to. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of issues. Where are the people? Where are the Agreed. voices? Where's the outrage? So then I feel like we need to rally up the outrage. And if there was one thing that the last administration did that I thought was good. Mm. It was, and I think you, you wanted- just, just lean in, what it was? <laughs> I, I, I kept, I'll tell you, I shouldn't have paused right there. I'm yeah, sorry. I was like, I just kept going, because yeah. it just sounded real crazy. <laughs> no, but what, what, one of the things, well, not that they did good, one of sure. the things that, that good that came out of it okay. is it, it rallied us. Oh, true. It, it, oh, it, it, okay. It, it, it made well us said, say, well said. oh, right, hell right. no, no right. you will not. Right. And I think one of you mentioned that earlier <laughs> on where it was just the like. The pendulum of oppression. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pendulum so, of oppression. Yes. So let, let's, not, let's not breathe right now. Let's not mm -hmm. be cool right now. Right. I mean that disrespectfully. But let's not just chill right now. Mm -hmm. Let's continue to be upset. Yeah. Right. Because he might be out the office, but a lot of those ideas are not. Correct. Right. Actually, what, those, what, what him being in the office did was it, it gaslit a lot mm -hmm. of people to yeah. say, oh, I can now uh, remove my hood. Mm -hmm. January 6th, right. 2021. Yes. Right. So I, mm -hmm. I think that that's important. So, okay, so as we are coming to a close, I want to <laughs> make sure that um, uh, we kind of bring all of this together. Sure. I thought this was a great conversation. Yeah. I thought that we really uh, touched on some really cool, not cool things, but some things that um, important, impor mm -hmm. that are important. Thank you. Sure. Um, what do you take away from this? What, this this conversation, the stuff we talked about. What do you take away? Oh, and what would you like to leave with the people who are watching? I know that's so hard. What to leave with them? Um, for allies, continue to educate yourself. Continue to educate yourself, and don't be beyond. Don't be above a reproach mm -hmm. um and just understand we're not monolithic mm -hmm. and you need to really respect people how they want to be what well, someone told me the other day um not treat people as you want to be treated treat people as they sh as they want to be treated mm -hmm. so if i tell you um my oh, my right. pronouns are mm -hmm. this respect that mm -hmm. and don't question it because i'm it's, it's a bit much um, and then... And it's none of your business. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. I'm sorry. Drink to that. Whatever. Is it almost time right. for news? It's almost time for... It's yeah. almost that mimosa uh, time. Mimosa time. But yeah, just let people let people breathe. And I think um, just... I would say don't, don't let anybody colonize your existence. Um, we dealt with that for 400 years and we still are grappling with it. So just let people breathe and find your self-care and find your, find your village. Find your village because yeah. it's, it's it's heavy being an adult and That's being a young important. person. Because yeah. paying bills is enough mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Living under capitalism is enough. So right. don't layer it with all these other things in place. So right. just let people be great. I like that. Find That's your it. village. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, find your village. So I really love that um, the three of us met today. Right. And we have been able yeah. to have a fantastic conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think those need to continue. Mm -hmm. they absolutely need to continue. And finding those allies, finding you know mm. your mm. your fellow community members are mm. always going to be important. Um, message I would like to say: if you if your mama does not support you, I'm your mama now. Hello. Mm. Okay, Blanca. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's yeah, right. Exactly. And just being able to be there for other people mm. to 
to listen and to take time. And I know that's my counseling psychology background of just, you know, listening to people. But how important that has been in my life mm. to just feel like I can breathe and exist and just have somebody not talk over me or talk through me mm. and just listen. And that needs to happen so much more. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, I would say this. Um, I would want to leave. First of all, I agree. I, I, we just met, but I just <laughs> felt like that um, there was a, a, a common link. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it was respect. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and that's important. I think that's, that's the kind of conversation. It doesn't mean that we necessarily think everything the same. Mm -hmm. right. I learned some things. Um, so just, just because we're in <laughs> the community doesn't mean that we can't still learn from the community. We're not so monolithic. I, mm -hmm. I, we're not right, monolithic. we're not monolithic. So yeah. I, got, I got that. For our allies, I want to I wanna mm -hmm. really bring home the message that um, there's no handbook. No. So, <laughs> that, be and so that's much where easier? I was going. Yeah, it would, it would be a lot easier. But that's where I was going with because a lot yeah. of times allies feel like, okay, I got it now. And then right. when it changes, it's like, well, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm just going to forget all of it. No, don't forget all of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Understand that it is evolving it is. and that we are understanding it better and better. Mm -hmm. um, by and by, that's the church boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, by and by. <laughs> that's the church boy at me. But, um, but just um, lead with love, yeah. mm. lead with respect, and get to know individuals just the way that you want people to get to know you yeah. mm. as an individual. Um, and to those in our community, mm -hmm. um, once we get it, now let's make sure somebody else gets it. So mm -hmm. let's keep fighting, let's keep pushing, yeah. let's not be comfortable. Um, I remember speaking to church where I, I heard a sermon where the... Um, they were talking about the book of Job, and it was mm -hmm. like, you know, in, in the book of Job, is, he's considered like, you know, he did everything right, you know. And yeah. so the preacher was like, there was something he did wrong. And he was like, he, what did he do wrong? What did he do wrong? He, of course, you know how they go. They go forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was at ease. Mm -hmm. he, was, oh, he was comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so then God had to shake him up, and so that's why all that stuff happened. So what I'm saying is, let's never get comfortable mm -hmm. because we have so many more generations that will be after we're, we're gone mm -hmm. that need us to not be comfortable now. Correct. Yeah. So let's go beyond the pride months. Mm -hmm. I heard that, which I really love. <laughs> mm -hmm. But let's support our pride organizations. Yeah. And let's mm -hmm. not, the parties are great. I, I can attest. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I can. Mm -hmm. But let's not just go for the parties. Right. But let's actually go for the work as well. So there's so much. And the conversation is, is never ending and so let's keep the conversation going educate keep the, yourself educate yes. yourself <laughs> keep, going. keep it going well guys it was a pleasure to meet you but it was even yeah. more of a pleasure to get to know you yes, and, and I, I, I hope to continue to get to know you and i just want to say to everybody i'm not sure which camera we're in <laughs> so you can cut that part out <laughs> But I want to say to everybody, thank you all for, for viewing us and listening. And I hope you learned something. But I also hope that you are you got some tools that you can take with you and you can actually make a change, make a difference. Be the change that you want to see. That, that, that's what we're doing. We're not sitting by um, just letting things happen. Um, we're going to make the changes that need to happen. So thank you all. And I guess we'll see you another time. Happy Pride. <laughs> <laughs>